empaths have frequently been depicted in the media as a kind of real life superhero. Their ability to feel what others feel means they have a very high social tolerance and a strong drive to help or save people. To top it off, compassion and affection actively flow from them, which makes narcissists their customized predators. The narcissist's voracious need to feed is bottomless. They're custom made to trap and hold onto empaths, draining them and never giving them back. The empath believes they're providing compassion like a safety blanket, when in reality, the narcissist is using that same compassion as an anchor for their hooks. Dislodging and escaping those hooks requires shattering illusions about the narcissist and revealing the faults inherent to the source of empathic behaviors. So grab a glass of water as some hard to swallow pills are being served. Doesn't taste great, but they're good for you. Number one, narcissists will never fulfill the covert contract. Here's the hard truth. On some level, we all do things for some sort of self-benefit. A holy person fasts to reach a higher plane of consciousness. Giving to charity feels good because we're helping others. And empaths give goodness to get goodness. That's their covert contract. Never heard of that? Well, you wouldn't have, as being unspoken is the nature of the covert contract. It also fuels the hamster wheel of resentment. The contract is an implicit expectation that giving emotionally earns a return of fulfilled emotional needs. Admitting the expectation is a breach of contract. The empath perceiving themselves selfish and defective. So when they don't get their meat's net, they ramp up the output, assuming they haven't earned the return, all the while silently feeling hurt, worthless, and resentful. Unspoken expectation is frustrating for anyone. With a narcissist, it's a disaster. To provide any return, you have to care about the other person, and narcissists don't. They see others as mere feeding troughs, and if a regular person is a snack, an empath is a catered all-you-can-eat buffet. To leave the wheel, the empath might need to admit their underlying beliefs, face themselves, learn that they are absolutely in their right to enforce their boundaries, and ask for what they need, while stating it kindly and respectfully, of course. Number two, you can't save someone who doesn't want it. Empaths want to help, improve, and save people. They think, I could really help them if I, which can work to an extent for many, but not with a narcissist. To accept help means you need assistance. Assistance is needed because there's something that needs to change. Changes are made because something could be better. If it can be better, that means it wasn't perfect before. It follows that accepting help about your behavior means accepting the idea that you could improve or change. Narcissists, by definition of their condition, believe themselves and constantly impress on others that they are idealized beings. So they don't need help. They don't need to fix what isn't broken. Lacking empathy, narcissists feel no issues in feeding off others for ego maintenance. They enjoy it. If they accepted help, they'd be double whammied. They'd have to stop feeding and they'd have to admit they need some fixing. The bitter pill is, you can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. They won't fix something they don't see as broken. Solution? Take a healthy swallow of water and realize their delusion is not your problem. Number three, emotions can't replace your brain. This is not simply a gut feeling. Gut feeling is often due to real evidence that is subconsciously picked up, but just isn't in clear detail. Empaths fall prey to emotional thinking. Emotional thinking is based completely off feeling. Overriding logic, reason, and anything else presented, even if it's opposing hard, tangible evidence. This is a risk when emotions are your superpower. Sometimes they go rogue, making the person turn away from the facts. An example is when someone feels they're stupid, despite achieving average or higher than average grades or even a degree. Like any predator, narcissists sniff out the opportunity, knowing that empaths tend to choose emotion over evidence. They're set up as easy prey to fool and trap. The narcissist simply overwhelms the empath's compassion trigger. The empath, who is completely unquestioning of their emotional thinking, 
can disregard any and all other abuses and signs to help or care for the poor victim. Any questioning and the narcissist cranks the dial on the heartstring puller, steering the empath away from outside wisdoms or truths. To break free, the empath needs to value their mind and to ask questions they have a right to know. Number four, narcissists are disordered and morally bankrupt. The definition of bankrupt is completely lacking in a particular quality or value. Thus, being morally bankrupt, narcissists can't be trusted to do what most people would do. Most people will have some level of predictability due to identifying with how others feel. For example, they won't lie to someone about their partner because it will hurt them or wreck their relationship. Narcissists, since they lack empathy, their emotions are centered around themselves. They feel superior and self-entitled to favorable treatment. How they choose to act depends only on personal gain, meaning they will lie to someone about their partner if it breaks them up, giving the narcissist a fresh ego feeding supply. Unpredictability is cliffhanger-like, and it gets worse when they feel their supply pulling away or getting low. The empath gets clingier or more attentive, trying to anticipate which way the narcissist will go. Thus, the narcissist gets more attention and has reeled their supply back in. Compassionate benefit of the doubt is employed by the empath to disregard or hand wave questionable behaviors. However, this needs to stop in order to confirm if they're being used. Questioning or calling them out cuts off their supply, threatens the narcissist's idealized image and forces them to look at their own insecurities. They would now view the empath as useless, maybe even dangerous. They will leave them alone. And by doing this, the manipulation stops. Number five, it's all a fantasy. It's not real. This is a twofold fantasy. On the first level, the narcissists live in their own fantasy world of overblown self-importance where everything revolves around their idealized selves. The second level is the empaths allowing themselves to be fooled by the narcissist's fantasy. They're manipulated into focusing on saving the narcissist and believing they will receive love in return, neither which can nor will come true. The whole fantasy may be spun into a grand tragic romance of soulmates seeking to complete each other. When in truth, it plays out more like a karmic lesson of this is exactly everything love is not. The empath has to in order to escape accept this disappointing truth and learn from it. Number six. Abuse means genuine love was never a part of the picture. Love does not involve abuse. This isn't negotiable. Abuse means this isn't an accident or a single bad day. It's a pattern of repeated, purposeful, conscious garbage treatment over time. This also means that the fake affection can be from any type of constant interaction deemed a relationship. It could be romantic, familial, or even that coworker who does you a solid. If there is a habitual pattern of abusive or denigrating behavior, they are devoid of emotional empathy. The bitter pill here, it's one many of us non-narcissists have a hard time with, empath or not. The truth is that no matter how nice the narcissist was at the beginning of the relationship or even after a fight, they never loved their partner. This is so emotionally, psychologically unbelievable that the empath is grasping at shreds of reason saying that surely some of it was real or it was real before something went wrong. Hard fact is, narcissism isn't a part-time deal. The whole thing was a purposefully built illusion. Every single thing they did or said was with the cold, singular purpose of keeping the ego meal train running. Getting past this and out of the narcissist's clutches means accepting that time lost can't be retrieved or retconned into something true. They need to value their future. Stop letting it be drained and wasted by the narcissist. Their best option is to cut off the supply and walk. We understand that if you're an empath, being in a similar situation or are currently in one, those six truths probably felt like dry swallowing horse pills like taking bitter medicine or waxing, though the results of partaking have long-term beneficial effects. 
They're also necessary truths to truly accept in order to get out of the narcissist's tar pit. Did you resonate with or recognize any of these points? Lend and share your insights in the comments. We've thrown our rope of hope, and if it helps you or others, maybe you'll swing on to the next video. Thanks for watching.